All right, guys. <clears throat> it is another hot, sticky, miserable heading to wet ball, but not already there. Summer day here in the collapse of everything on this miserable. What is it? It is a Sunday afternoon. It is July 14th, 2024. Uh, here in the middle of certainly the most miserable summer I have ever spent in New York, baby. Here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, and I, uh, you know, I was very weary of turning on the mainstream media today, just assuming that uh, every story on the mainstream media, certainly the top 100, were going to be about that little, uh, that little, uh, how much trouble will this get? That, that, uh, that, uh, dude, yesterday afternoon, uh, <laughs> which I don't need to remind you of. <clears throat> anyway, since, uh, I'm looking for something else to rant about. Unbelievably, I turn on the mainstream media news today to look for something other than that and am absolutely, I, I mean, I, I am jaw-droppingly astonished to find not only does the six big, of course, the five biggest stories on the planet are about uh, Butler, Pennsylvania, uh, but coming in at number six, not only do we uh, have a story not datelined Butler, Pennsylvania, but this one right here from the New York Times titled, <clears throat> Is There a Future in the Doomsday Economy? So, <laughs> this is the New York Times. <clears throat> Taking a somewhat light-hearted look at uh, what the the single biggest clueless morons in the doom in the Doomer community, well, in a tie, I guess, for the near-term human extinction, uh, clueless morons, in a and pretty much in a tie would be the doomsday preppers. The doomsday preppers, these these absolute uh, clueless morons, who number one think they can survive what is coming down the pike on this planet, <coughs> and more importantly than thinking they can is wanting to by anybody uh, would want to uh, survive what, what is coming down the pike and you know I always go back to the my interview with the late great uh, fellow Airbnb vacation rental manager Gail Zawacki uh, who you know told me in no uncertain terms I don't know when the collapse is going to get here but I don't want to have anything to do with it and neither do you uh, it, it, it just completely uh, flabbergast me why anybody thinks they could or would want to uh, survive what is what what is coming uh, so of course I have mentioned that there is one thing that I am doing to survive the collapse of everything you know being a fan of Lord of the Flies the one and only thing I have done is I have about 50 pairs of these cheap reading glasses 
uh, <coughs> to uh, that, 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 that is the one thing I have invested in is about 50 pairs of cheap reading glasses. Anyone who knows of Piggy and the Lord of the Flies knows uh, why I've made that decision. But uh, we're not here to talk about me and Gail Zawacki. What does the New York Times have to say? And I'll put the link on here, and maybe if you're not uh, paywalled out, you can actually read this for yourself. So I'm not sure I'm going to make it through the whole thing, but uh, let's just start into this and uh, see what comes up. <clears throat> when it comes to surviving the apocalypse, <clears throat> You could do a lot worse than the West Virginia branch of Fortitude Ranch, a constellation of five survivalist compounds across the United States and one of a growing number of businesses aiming to seize on Americans' deepening anxieties about the future. <clears throat> Set on a rise above the lush valley cradling the Lost River in eastern West Virginia, about two hours from Washington, D.C., the 50-acre property backs up against the George Washington and the Jefferson National Forest. A handsome guest house built of dark timber slats anchors the property, two large boxy dormitories, also timber, but more rustic, as well as a bare-bones bunker, are designed to house more than 100 members. They are each expected to pay $2,000 to $20,000, depending on the level of accommodation, to join Fortitude Ranch and then pay another $1,000 per year per person and dues to call this their home fort, meaning they will head there when catastrophe strikes. Yeah, uh, like, like number one, these clueless fucking morons thinking they're, they're just, you know, a nuclear war, you know, a nuclear strike or whatever. <clears throat> They think, these clueless fucking morons, they're just going to hop in their gas-sucking car and head off to the hills, literally head into the hills. Like the roads are going to be open, there's not going to be cops and robbers with checkpoints every half mile, that they're going to have gas for their gas-sucking cars. So, yeah. So, uh, catastrophe strikes, and, and they just throw the kids in the, in the car and head into the hills to Fortitude Ranch. You know, I, I, I already see a, uh, a problem forming here. <clears throat> I don't know if the reporter for the New York Times uh, asked the question exactly how will they head there when catastrophe strikes? But anyway, since we are putting, uh, what are we doing? Uh, what's it called? Suspending disbelief. We are going to suspend disbelief and way deeper into this ain't gonna happen uh, story. I, I was just going to throw this in the ain't gonna happen roundup, but... Uh, it deserves its own level of, uh, uh, of you know, vitriol. Some of the rooms, which vary in size and luxury, are stocked with plastic bins and duffel bags, as if awaiting a college student. But there is a more serious purpose at work here. Survival. Yes, a, spa a spacious underground shelter protected by 
layers of concrete, steel, and wood connects the two residential buildings, its walls lined with cans of coffee and tuna. Well, uh, at least they at, at least they got the coffee part right. You know, I, I would be pretty pissed. Y you know, if I paid all of this money, and uh, and, and all I could get was uh, was a lousy tuna fish sandwich at the end of it, but at least they had the brains to uh, pack in uh, the. Uh, the cans of coffee good for them that's that's the one smartest one smart thing I've heard mentioned in this article yet as well as enormous buckets of ready-to-eat meals there are also underground living and meeting rooms inside a locked armory assault rifles and crossbows repose on wall pegs on a tabletop sits a 50 caliber rifle which could be used to take out the engine block of an approaching vehicle exactly uh, a lot like all of the 50 caliber rifles uh, lining the roadway uh, from Washington DC to this place uh, Oh, an inert radiate, radiation detector is positioned nearby. There are two at each compound. Guard towers ring the property. The dormitories have balconies with clear, continuous sight lines along the edge of the forest. Outside, <coughs> pens called chickens, sheep, and rabbits. Chickens, sheep, and rabbits who assuming do not get, uh, you know, turn to radioactive dust uh, when DC goes up in a mushroom cloud. Their meat and eggs are intended to supplement the 2,000 calorie per day diet that all members are guaranteed for at least one year. There you go. We'll be eating a lot of kebabs. There you go, rabbit kebabs for the end times, said Steve Rene, who manages the West Virginia compound and also serves as the company's chief security officer. He is one of three workers who currently live on the property. Fortitude Ranch is the brainchild of Drew Miller, a retired Air Force colonel who runs the five compounds through his corporation and is seeking to expand the business through franchising. He is one of dozens of entrepreneurs who have seized on what might be called the doomsday economy fueled by the growing prepper movement. It, it's it's the, the prepper movement's adherents <clears throat> take steps of varying degrees from stocking up on cheap reading glasses to stocking several days supply of food and water to erecting concrete bunkers to prepare for the mass disaster they believe is coming. You may recognize some of them as the subjects, uh, you know, of that absolutely hilarious reality, that, that non-reality series Doomsday Preppers. When that program premiered on the National Geographic Network in 2012, Many reviewers dismissed it, dismissed it as comic relief. In the dozen years since, however, growing evidence of climate change, deepening political divisions, and now anxiety about artificial intelligence 
have made those apocalyptic fantasies somewhat less fantastical. <clears throat> Quote, Things are changing, said John Ramey, founder of popular prepping website The Prepared, the upcoming presidential election. And of course, this article uh, came out yesterday. Uh, so this article actually hit the New York Times yesterday, uh, right when that little, uh, that little, uh, dare I say it, the, uh, what, what I want to say is M-O, that little M-O uh, in Pennsylvania yesterday, so you better damn believe that uh, the, the prepper community right now is in absolute overdrive that uh, that John Ramey, uh, his website has probably crashed as these clueless fucking moron doomsday preppers are, are now uh, clearly preparing for all-out civil war to uh, break out in November as if it didn't break out yesterday. And, and, I, and, and I am not making fun necessarily of those people uh, predicting uh, an all-out civil war erupting after the uh, after the uh, the shot heard, heard around the world uh, was fired yesterday. Uh, but anyway, I uh, said we weren't going to talk about that. Uh, <coughs> the upcoming presidential election as a majority of Americans fearing violence. Huh, can't imagine why. The recent hit film Civil War, in which the present day United States buck buckles under the tank treads of compete competing domestic armies, played into that narrative, which seemed outlandish back when Doomsday Preppers first aired 12 years ago. The companies that have staked their claim in the Doomsday economy include American Reserves, which also offers prepper essentials like a 12-month supply of food for $2,800, assumingly that's per person, $2,800 per person, and an emergency crank radio for $60. Fieldcraft Survival offers $250 classes across the country on, quote, traditional bushcraft and modern survival skills including setting traps and tying knots and companies, those companies offering luxury bunkers such as the Vivos X-Point Complex outside Edgemont, South Dakota, where membership goes for $55,000. <clears throat> Almost 20 million Americans, or about 7% of all American households, now identify as preppers based on a recent analysis of FEMA data. According to the results of last year's National Household Survey on Disaster Preparedness, 57% of Americans had taken three or more steps to prepare for disaster. Well, I guess my hoarding uh, cheap reading glasses does not put me into that 7% of clueless morons. There had been a 15% increase 
in the share of respondents who, quote, assembled or updated supplies, uh, close quote, from the year before FEMA found, <clears throat> although they probably would not identify themselves as preppers, some wealthy Americans, particularly those who made their fortune in Silicon Valley, have begun to build lavish survivalist compounds on their own. Rapper Rick Ross, never heard the name in my life, announced this year that he was building a luxury bunker. Mark Zuckerberg uh, is developing a $100 million 1,400 acre compound on the Hawaiian island of Kauai that according to Wired includes a huge underground bunker of 5,000 square feet that will come with its own energy and food supplies. Miller sees a fortitude ranch membership as being more within economic reach for the average American. A quote, Spartan accommodation offers little more than a bunk bed in a hallway. A quote, luxury membership can house a family of five in a more private space complete with a private toilet. I uh, don't know if that is a private five gallon bucket that he's talking about or what. Quoting uh, the huckster snake oil salesman Miller, quote, we want to be an affordable survival option for the middle class. Yes. For Miller, Fortitude Ranch is the culmination of convictions he has held for decades. Uh, he's got all of his history in the uh, in the military, uh, so he was uh, since night. He, he was he was hanging out at some air base. Uh, 50 miles away uh, and, and decided, quote, I'm just going to get myself killed here, Miller said he thought at the time. Yeah, like he's not going to get himself I I I anyway. Uh, they go through uh, all of this, this long, uh, they give this long resume uh, and, and, and he does have a pretty impressive uh, resume. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Several developments convinced him that the end of the Cold War was not going to usher in an era of global peace. 2001's Dark Winter Simulation in which the United States was attacked with smallpox, then a Blue Ribbon Commission that issued a report in 2004 about the danger of electromagnetic pulses, which it said 20 years ago could, quote, produce a catastrophic impact on our society by taking down the electric grid and then the 2011 riots in Britain that began as a peaceful protest against the killing of a black man but devolved into mass unrest, said uh, Harvard doctorate Miller uh, right before that little kerfuffle in uh, Butler, Pennsylvania yesterday, quote, people behave badly. Do you think so? People behave badly. People of all colors, all races, all nationalities. 
a a anyway guys this goes on and on and on and uh, then it just you know starts talking about his business model and his franchise opportunities to where you can uh, franchise your own fortitude ranch and I assure you that uh, fortitude ranch uh, is going to be uh, fielding probably millions of calls from clueless fucking morons uh, in the next few days if it isn't already but with that I got to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse uh, <clears throat> get ready for my own uh, I, I guess survivors of the collapse coming to check in to Blue Dragon and Seahorse Tiny Houses here at Bugs in a Jar Farm to see if they can survive the wet bulb temperatures of the summer of 2024. There was one... Uh, thing uh, I would here we go uh, this quote that I did like uh, the the uh, the fortitude ranch motto prepare for the worst enjoy the present and there you go uh, so maybe the the uh, preppers are not as clueless as I thought. Prepare for the worst. Enjoy the present. Uh, that is exactly what I am getting ready to do. Bye, guys.